And this is Mardi Gras Chicken and Truffles. And this is Dennis. Hello? Hey. Hey, Joe. Yeah, I'll be at your place in about an hour, right? What, now? It's like two in the morning. I'm working on my script. Yeah, I'm dropping off my uncle at the airport and everything else is closed. I'm doing the whole little cob thing. I'm starving. Vincenzo, let's go! Mamma mia, always screaming. I'm not screaming, I'm just talking, all right? Let's go, it's gonna rain. So I'll see you in an hour, right? All right, let me see what I can do. Don't see. Do and so the quest begins to make something within the hour that's low carb, keto, quick, and absolutely delicious. Problem is, he's basically out of ingredients. No pork rinds for breadings, no sausage for pizza, no broth for soups, no sausage to fry, no beef for burgers, no onions for anything, not enough eggs for an omelette, and what is essentially an empty fridge, except for chicken. Chicken it is. But no egg readings for a time means it's time for a dry rub. The spice blend begins with rosemary, except his spoon doesn't fit. Boop! He gives up and simply pours it out, two tablespoons to be exact. The spoon is cleaned and he adds two and a half tablespoons of chili powder, except he can't find the half tablespoon, so he simply eyeballs it. Kosher salt, two tablespoons of ground up vampire repellent, which is rather potent material. A tablespoon of oregano, a teaspoon of cumin, a decent amount of pepper that took the black, ground mustard, a teaspoon of struggling, some non-smoked paprika, and two teaspoons of cayenne pepper. Don't worry, it's all in the description below. Now he must mix his ingredients, which eerily resembles the primary school science project. Next, he preheats the oven to 425 degrees American, and ensures his oven is empty while simultaneously grabbing his trusty baking tray. Two pieces of foil of the aluminium are cut to size then laid upon one another and folded along the long edge. He folds no less than three to four times over, which, when the sheets are opened, creates a near impermeable seam. This DIY sheet of metal is then laid upon the baking tray and fit the size. Why bother, you ask? Because he is lazy and this makes for simple cleanup. The tray is set aside and then comes the slimy step. He prepares enough chicken thighs for two hungry men and then some as meal prep for the next few days. He pats his meat, and then with paper towels, pats his meat dry, all while wondering how many chickens had to die for this very meal. Then he cleans. The evenly distributed chicken is lightly coated with olive oil and rubbed down ever so gently. They are then flipped, coated again, and massaged before moving on to the seasoning stage. Once the thighs are heavily coated, he flips them, and again, heavily spices them to create a nice crust. However, he runs out of rub. This is why it's recommended to double the amount you think you will require. To play it safe, he makes double the recipe this time around. Any excess can be stored for later. Once the chicken has the color of burning coals, it's time for the thighs to go into the hot box. Onto the middle rack they go, and the timer is set for 35 minutes. Then... He cleans, because ants. As for the leftover rub, well, it's aptly labeled Mardi Gras, then set aside on his cupboard. Question number one. Does it have to be chicken thighs? No, you can use wings, drumsticks, breasts, pretty much anything, even a whole chicken, this rub is fantastic. How long do I cook them for? The beauty of using chicken thighs is that you can actually set it and kind of almost forget it. So if you're afraid of cooking chicken because you don't want it to be raw, thighs are the way to go. 35 minutes will get you usually right to the temperature you want to be at, which is 165 degrees internal temperature, but you can just let it cook longer, especially if you're doing dark meat, do maybe even up to 50, maybe in an hour. And it's going to be still juicy because of all the intramuscular fat and a lot of other goodness. Why didn't you mix the spices with the oil? You could make a slurry, but I don't really want to waste it and I also don't want to clean any more stuff than I already have, so that's why I just do it all on the pan. How long will the rub last? It's all dry spices, so as long as your dry spices are good, the rub should pretty much last until you use it all, which probably won't be very long. Is it spicy? 
It's as spicy as you want it to be. You don't have to add the red cayenne pepper, but I highly recommend it. It gives it a nice sort of Cajun feel to it and a little bit of kick. You all right, bud? What does it pair well with? This dish pairs well with pretty much anything. Salad, broccoli, all sorts of vegetables, all sorts of sides. And I do have some broccoli, but that's not very interesting. Dennis, what's going on? It's like 3 a.m. Yeah, I know. Well, I was trying to sleep. Yeah, cool. Listen, I need a waffle recipe pronto. Waffle or chaffle? Waffle, chaffle, baffle, tomato, tomato. It doesn't really matter. Something neat can stand up to meat, maybe a little sweet. What do you got? All right. I'm only going to do this once. All right. So get a pen. Here we go. All right. Your basic chaffle recipe makes two chaffles. So preheat uh -huh. either. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. All right. Yeah, let me know how it works out. We'll do. Later, Chaffle Guy. Oh, don't call me that, please. I hate that. I hate that. And oh, don't actually just don't call me. Yeah. All right. Bye. Good night. All right. Now it's time to get a cooking. Or is it baking? Who knows? He grabs the necessary dry goods from his rack of ingredients and then gets to chaffling. Since he's making enough for two hungry men, he triples the recipe, which begins with one tablespoon of almond flour, half a cup of mozzarella, of which he gracefully stops at the max fill line, and for some sweet sweet, a bit of low carb sweetener. The cup is capped and taken to the sacrificial altar of the pulverizer. However, the crumb structure he seeked was not filled by the overcrowded cup, max fill line or not, and thus it requires the assistance from larger blades. Perfect. Now he seeks the moisture of a single aged egg, times three of course for the three servings. Once the final egg is added to the spacious blender, he struggles with the lid before returning to the altar. Upon blending, it yields a mixture akin to a thick pancake batter, exactly what we want. In order to make the chaffles, we will use the cheapest, most effective tool to make waffles, the Dash Mini. However, it would be ideal if he had two. Snap, and you shall receive. He struggles to plug them in, of which he is 100% successful 50% of the time. After allowing his two minis to heat, he opens them and using a silicone brush, rubs them down with some olive oil, pours the batter, and shuts the lid. Then, we wait. Don't pay any attention to the blue lights. They mean nothing. It's just, that's just power cycling. So, that's not a timer. Wise words to avoid confusion. Once they stop steaming, this should be nearly complete. Using some sort of surgical forceps, he removes them from the maker and places them on a rack to cool. Then, continues forth. Coming! It appears Joe's airport drop-off is complete. Oh, you know where everything is, so have a seat. Mmm, I'm excited! And so the remaining truffles are removed and set to cool, and much like pancakes, the first two truffles were hot trash. The only thing left to do is plate our meal. And if you have a few more minutes to spare, why not try this chicken parmesan? Simple, crispy, and absolutely delicious. Until next time, eat well.